Do you think you can easily list the planets of the solar system? Let's try. Mercury, Venus, Earth, another Earth. Wait, sounds crazy, doesn't it? Whoa. However, the ancient Greeks didn't think so. In this video, you'll find out why are scientists now going back to the absurd theories of the past? How is Pluto's killer trying to redeem himself? And most importantly, could there be another Earth within the solar system? Are you ready to find out about another Earth? Wait a second, I'll just log into my account. Uh, 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 well, maybe it's... Uh, do you have a similar password? Congratulations, it'll take less than a second to hack into your account. This video is sponsored by NordPass, a secure password manager. It helps generate complex passwords that you don't need to memorize. Access to social media, Netflix, Amazon, and other services are now stored in one place. But most importantly, NordPass has an autofill feature and can be synchronized with six devices at once. Don't give intruders a chance. Register now and get 50% off on a two-year NordPass premium plan using the Riddle promo code. Plus, you get an additional month for free and the 30-day money-back guarantee. And I finally managed to log into my YouTube account. It's a good thing I don't have to memorize the password. Instead, I'm going to tell you about another Earth in the solar system. But first, we need to understand what led to such assumptions. Back in the 5th century BC, an ancient Greek philosopher, Philolaus, suggested a scheme of the solar system that was slightly different from the one we know today. It wasn't enough for the Greeks to place the invisible central fire in the middle. They went further and shifted the Sun itself into one of the orbits, so that in addition to the already existing Earth, a second Counter-Earth could also be observed, spinning carelessly right in front of our home planet. However, this theory was immediately questioned. For example, Aristotle suggested that the Counter-Earth was introduced only to raise the number of heavenly bodies around the central fire from 9 to 10, which the Pythagoreans regarded as the perfect number. But did Philolaus really introduce a second Earth into the solar system just for show? Well, it's not really like that. The thing is, the counter-Earth was the perfect explanation for the solar eclipse phenomena. We've long been aware that the cause of a solar eclipse is not a counter-Earth. But why do scientists nowadays increasingly go back to such seemingly primitive reflections? Is there any chance that a counter-Earth really exists, but we've overlooked it? Mysterious objects have recently been discovered in the solar system, namely the so-called Trojans. Trojans are small celestial bodies that share the orbit of a larger planet, remaining in a stable orbit at an angle of approximately 60 degrees. Always around, but almost never seen. Jupiter has the most significant number of Trojans, but this model can also work for Earth. Maybe that's where the mysterious counter-Earth is lurking. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Earth actually has a Trojan asteroid chasing it relentlessly, and it's called 2010 TK7. But it's too small and completely unfit for habitation. However, there is another scenario in which several celestial bodies may exist side by side without getting in each other's way. Meet the even more intriguing horseshoe orbits. In this case, the object passes a part of the path around the planet, then turns around and goes back. So, should we hope for a backup friend, a second Earth, where we could always go for exhausted mineral resources or find shelter in case of a world war? Earth's double might indeed have existed in a horseshoe orbit, but with current scientific progress, we would have discovered this phenomenon a century ago. But why do we think that a counter-Earth must necessarily be in the same orbit as Earth? Should we look a little further? Besides, we have all the preconditions for finding something really interesting in the solar system. 
several objects in the solar system have unique orbits. They can only be explained by the presence of another celestial body we don't know about yet. It's intriguing, isn't it? In 2016, astronomers at the California Institute of Technology, Constantine Batygin and Michael Brown hypothesized the existence of the so-called Planet X, which, they presumed, orbits the Sun far beyond Pluto. It's funny that the same Michael Brown in 2006 killed Pluto. Is this scientist trying to redeem himself by finding a new planet to replace Pluto? It should be noted at the outset that the new prediction was based on detailed mathematical and computer modeling rather than direct observation. That is, no one's seen a new planet yet. And no one's gonna see it in the next couple of years. None of our modern telescopes could capture it. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory's equipment may be able to do this, but the research station is still under construction. All evidence indicates the existence of another celestial body within the solar system. But how did it get there? Let's go back to the ancient Greeks. They believed a central fire was at the center of the solar system, and the sun kept rotating in one of its orbits. What if their assumptions were not that far from the truth? Could there be another luminary within the solar system? According to a new report from Harvard scientists, there used to be two twin stars in the solar system. Researchers have noted that most stars are born in pairs, so this assumption could be considered well-founded. But as often happens between brothers and sisters, our suns squabbled, and one of them had to go, wilding through the Milky Way. You'd think, why would we bring up the old celestial fights today? But the thing is, the second sun, which we'll probably never find, could have had a direct impact on the mysterious planet X, the one that Constantine Batygin is struggling to find now. When the second star was leaving after losing the battle with our stronger sun, it could have taken planet X with it, and thus carried it to the edge of the solar system, which we can observe now, judging by the eccentric orbit of the proposed planet. But what if instead of a planet, we should be looking for blackness. Some scientists believe that instead of Planet X, humanity may well find a black hole in the solar system. And not a stellar hole that we've gotten used to, but a primordial one that has never been observed yet. Usually, black holes form from the collapse of a star, and their mass is always several times that of our Sun. Primordial black holes are smaller than their more famous fellow holes, but much more mysterious. They're thought to originate in the hot energy and matter haze formed in the first instance after the Big Bang. The problem is that although the mass of this black hole will be the same as that of the presumed Planet X, it will be condensed to the size of an orange. Moreover, it's truly black. That means it won't show up on any existing telescopes. If you look directly at it, the only sign of the presence of the primordial black hole would be a void, a tiny gap in a canopy of stars in the night sky. Anyway, while we're looking for Planet X or the black hole, these theories have already served as the basis for assumptions about a parallel world and our absolute total copies living in it. Who knows, maybe right now, on the counter-Earth, a counter batigan is calculating the probability of our existence. Would you ever want to meet your spitting image from some distant star?